facial feedback hypothesis. If you put on a, a frown now, or a nice gentle smile, your body chemistry is actually going to change to reflect whatever your face is showing. So this is a quote by, where is it? By Thich Nhat Hanh, can difficult to pronounce his name, a, a Buddhist monk. Sometimes your joy is the source of your smile, but sometimes your smile can be the source of your joy. So we actually influence our body. We actually influence our mood through our face. That's why actors very often can get into whatever character they're playing simply by acting. Because there is the facial feedback to the rest of your body. You actually release chemicals according with the face that you're making. William James. Whistling to keep up courage is no mere figure of speech. On the other hand, sit all day in a moping posture, sign reply to everything with a dismal voice, and your mel melancholy lingers. Smooth the brow, brighten the eyes, contract the dorsal rather than the ventral aspects of the frame, and speak in a major key, pass the genial compliment, and your heart must be frigid indeed if it does not gradually thaw. What essentially William James is talking about is something beyond the facial feedback hypothesis. It's something where there is not much research, just a little research on, which is the body feedback hypothesis. If you sit down all day like this versus upright and proud, it will affect your mood. It will affect how you feel about yourself. In a few ways, first of all, the message you communicate to yourself, self-perception theory, but also in terms of how other people perceive you. If you shake hands like this, limply, versus shake hands firmly, you're communicating message to the person with whom you're shaking your hand. And that message comes back right at you, both in terms of how they perceive you and that impacts you, but also in terms of how you perceive yourself. You know, one of the ex-students from 1504, she played, uh, uh, she was on the hockey team, just graduated last year. So I met her over the summer, and, and she comes over, and she shakes my hand, and I was in tears. It hurt so much, and I thought she must have listened in class. So don't exaggerate. Just firm, nice. I mean, really, I think she broke some of the bones in my hand. But it matters. It communicates a message. You know, I'm not going to mess with her, ever. I'm scared of her right now. It communicates a message of strength and confidence. If we walk around proud, we're communicating a certain message. If we're walking around stooped, we're also communicating a message to the environment that then reflects on us, but also to ourselves. And that reflects on us, too. And finally, I want to share a study with you. This is by Hammerley. This is a study done. You know what? Actually, I'm going to leave that to next time because I want to get to something important. So I'm going to start next time with this, with this study because it's a, it's a long study, but it's a very important study. So I will, I will talk about it next time, first thing in class. I want to get to something before we end, something that will change our relationship. Fake it till you make it. David Myers has done a lot of important work in uh, this area of positive psychology. And what he showed was that very often, even if we act happy, even if we act with high self-esteem, even if I act joyful, as William James said, that affects our mood. The question now becomes, what about permission to be human? Well, first of all, there are times when we don't want to fake it till we make it, we want to cry, we want to be miserable, and we want to act that way. However, we need to find when is it the time to get out and to go to that party, even if it's the last thing in the world that I want to do. And the difference here is about active acceptance. I can still accept my emotions, I can still accept my pain and experience it, and still choose to act in accordance with how I deem most appropriate or most helpful. 
So I can accept the fact, you know, I, I was just dumped, say, by my girlfriend. I can accept the fact that I feel terrible about it and awful, but then three days later, go out to Noakes and party. <laughs> go wild. So faking it, again, because of the facial feedback hypothesis, because of the body feedback hypothesis, because of self-perception theory, the behavior will affect my attitude. And after an, a crazy night out in Noakes, I will actually feel better and healthy. Well, maybe not, but better. Here's a quick video of um, Marvel Collins talking, talking about some of her experiences. I think what made me what I am is my parents and a consistency. I mean, I want it to be as successful as my parents and my grandparents. Um, it, in those days, it was quite rare to be black and to be successful. So I think the determination of my parents and grandparents, the, are, uh, we would get chastised, uh, as I say, I'm 14 years older than my one sister. But if we walked in church and didn't hold our heads up, my mom would say, what was wrong with you today? Walking with your head all down. She would scream down the street, get your head up, <laughs> on my way to school. Um, people, I've often heard the comment to her, I can always tell your child on the playground. We were brought up with a great sense of pride. Get your head up, walk up straight. When you watch Marvel Collins, that's how she walks. That's how she carries herself, and that communicates a message to her students, to other people to herself. I'm going to jump to this point. So very often behavioral change is gradual. So what is the acute change? The acute change is about coping. It's about putting ourselves on the line. And when we cope, the important thing, when we t it's to take the risk. It's to do something that we don't feel comfortable doing. In other words, it's about exiting our comfort zone and entering our stretch zone. 